If you clicked on this video, you're a computer science student or an aspiring engineer who desperately wants a software engineering internship. And it feels like the market is more competitive than ever, right? But you open up LinkedIn and somehow everyone else is landing these amazing offers, which makes you think, how the hell do I get there? What am I actually missing here? Well, I'm about to give you the exact roadmap that will get you that software engineering internship this year. Not next year, when the market gets better, this year. My name is Amon, and I've used this exact system to land six software engineering internships at companies like Amazon, Shopify, and HP. And more importantly, I've used it to help dozens of my students get amazing offers in today's brutal market. Let's dive in. The high level principle that's going to get you a software engineering internship this year is something I like to call the bottleneck principle. This idea is so powerful, it's not only going to level up your internship game, but it's honestly going to change how you approach problems in life. The bottleneck principle is simple. In any process or system, your overall output is limited by the slowest step. Think about it like this. You're cruising on a highway with five wide open lanes. Cars are flying by smoothly at 70 miles per hour until suddenly all five lanes merge into one. It doesn't matter how many cars are behind you, how fast they were going, or how much gas they have everything slows down at that merge point. That single lane becomes the bottleneck. So when you're struggling to get a software engineering internship, your first question shouldn't be, how do I get better at everything? It should be, where exactly is my bottleneck in this system? What's the one thing that's actually stopping me from leveling up? Now, there are two major bottlenecks in the software engineering internship process that most people struggle with. And based on what I'm about to tell you, it should be crystal clear which category you fall into. Bottleneck number one is not getting enough interviews. About 75% of you probably fall into this category. You've applied to hundreds of roles and gotten maybe just two or three interviews. Your application just isn't cutting it. And bottleneck number two is not passing those interviews once you actually get them. This is about 20% of people who get interviews but can't actually convert them into real offers. Here's what you need to do. You need to identify which bottleneck category you're in right now and laser focus on that one thing. You essentially want to ignore everything else until it's completely solved. Now, for the majority of you in this first category here, not getting interviews, here's your immediate action plan to change that. This is how you get a steady stream of online assessments and interviews. Step one is write an amazing resume. And that falls in the get the interview category. Now, that sounds incredibly obvious, but stick with me here. Most people completely screw this up, but we're going to make sure that's not you. Here are the key principles you need to craft an absolutely killer software engineer resume. Number one is lead with experience, even if it's non-technical. Any work you've done can be framed to show relevance. Be as bold as you can reasonably defend, whether it's volunteer roles, club positions, hackathons, even carrying broken computers for an unpaid IT internship can be spun into something impressive. Recruiters put the most weight on experience, so presenting it well is how you get past that initial filter. Number two is use strong action verbs. Instead of just listing boring responsibilities, use powerful words like led, executed, spearheaded, architected. These words make your contribution sound active, impactful, and professional. They also make your resume pop and show that you are driving results, not just sitting there passively. Number three is to always quantify your impact. Don't just say you improved a system. Say something like led the design and development of five new global API attributes, improving data accuracy for 30,000 plus titles on Prime Video. Numbers make your achievements concrete and memorable and they stick in people's minds. Step four is to cut the fluff. Seriously, no irrelevant hobbies or interests like tennis or Super Smash Bros. Brawl at the bottom of your resume. This isn't your dating profile. Your resume needs to be laser focused on proving you're a capable software engineer. Now for internships, you'll want to actually put your education at the top. This is a quick but strategic move. Since internships are specifically designed for students, placing your education section at the top immediately buckets you correctly for recruiters. Remember, recruiters spend less than seven seconds scanning your resume, so you need to make the right impression instantly. Follow these six principles and you'll drastically increase your chances of getting that first interview with an amazing resume. Step two here is to craft an outstanding LinkedIn profile. Now that we fixed your resume and made it an absolute interview magnet, let's talk about LinkedIn because a great resume will get you noticed, but your LinkedIn profile, that's your secret networking weapon. Most people just slap their LinkedIn link onto their resume and call it a day, but completely miss the incredible power a LinkedIn holds. Treating LinkedIn like something to show off to recruiters is like buying a Tesla because it looks cool. Sure, Teslas look cool, but 90% of the value isn't in the appearance. 
It's in the incredible features like self-driving and insane acceleration. You want to actually use it and enjoy it on a daily basis. And that's exactly what LinkedIn is for. You want to use it to actively grow and expand your network. So why would you even want to connect with interesting people in software engineering? What do you leverage those connections for? And how do they actually help you get that internship? The key is leveraging your LinkedIn to get referrals, which coincidentally is our third step in the get the interview process. A referral is basically a recommendation from an employee at a company you want to work for, stating that you're a good fit for the role. Here's the thing. Most companies get tens of thousands of applications per month. If you cold apply, willingly choosing to not get a referral, you have almost zero chance of getting an offer. Referrals give you so much more leverage, it's actually unimaginable. In fact, every single person I've talked to who has had 10 to 20 plus referrals was already getting interviews. It's almost magical how well they work. So to leverage your LinkedIn for referrals, you'll one, talk to everybody in your network, family, friends, high school, friends, parents, university staff, professors, literally anyone who might work at a company or know someone who does, you'd be shocked by how many companies have hidden internships that aren't widely advertised online. Step two is to ask these people about any open roles at their company or if they have any friends who have open roles at those people's companies as well. People genuinely love helping out. Both my internships at a local insurance company and a job on Deere came through word of mouth and referrals. My friend Amy actually helped me get my internship at HP after my Shopify offer got rescinded just because she knew someone and sent my resume to them. Next, you'll specifically want to target companies in your local area. These roles typically pay less, maybe $15 to $25 an hour, but they have way less competition. That's your huge advantage for getting your foot in the door. You'll also want to hit career fairs if you're in college. Career fairs can be one of the fastest ways to get referrals, to get your foot in the door, especially when you're looking for that crucial first role. They lead to hidden internships that are not advertised online, which means less competition. Here's a perfect example. One of my friends attended an engineering career fair and connected with a SpaceX recruiter. The recruiter was initially looking for aerospace engineers, but my friend managed to talk his way into securing a software engineering interview at SpaceX, ultimately landing a full-time position. Think about that. A recruiter was looking for one thing, and through pure conversational skills and networking, my friend landed an interview for something completely different. That happens all the time. How? It wasn't magic. It was about showing up prepared, being confident in leveraging that direct human connection. All right, so you're crafting an amazing resume, leveraging LinkedIn for referrals, and you're starting to get those interviews. Now, the fourth hidden issue that most people don't realize if you have an amazing resume, LinkedIn, and you're getting referrals, but you're still not getting interviews is something called application strategy. And this one is the most overlooked because you can have everything right and still not get interviews because you're simply applying to the wrong companies. And the biggest mistake I see here is people overestimate their ability to get into fang level companies and high paying interviews. Internships. If you don't have at least two or three technical experiences, ideally both software engineer internships, you're simply not ready to go for a FANG company like Amazon, Google, or Meta. So application strategy is essentially applying to the right companies that fit your experience level. Now, if you want my help, along with a team of six FANG engineers and recruiters to help you implement all of these four steps, so completely rewriting your resume from scratch with our four-step proprietary resume system, building your whole LinkedIn profile, helping you get dozens if not hundreds of referrals, and deciding your whole application strategy, check out the Software Engineering Accelerator. It's the top link in the description, and that's our premier program where we actually help you do all of this to land an internship guaranteed. All right, so you've crafted an amazing resume, have an excellent LinkedIn, you're leveraging LinkedIn for referrals, and you have your perfect application strategy. So at this point, you're starting to get interviews. Congratulations, you've solved the first bottleneck in the Software Engineering Internship Acquisition process. Now, here's the thing. These first four steps of getting interviews actually don't matter at all if you don't nail these next three steps. You need these next three if you want anything I've discussed so far to actually work. The truth is, you can have an amazing resume, an amazing LinkedIn, hundreds of referrals, and a great application strategy, and you can still not get a software engineering internship offer. You're probably thinking, come on, how is that possible? How could someone have all of this stuff and no offer. Think of this like trying to open a door. It doesn't matter how many keys you have if you don't have the specific key that opens a lock. Nothing else matters when opening that door. And that's what interviews are like. It doesn't matter if you have dozens of interviews, if you fail all of them, you're never going to get an offer. For those of you in the second category, not passing interviews, here are the next three steps to convert those interviews into offers. All right, step five of our seven step system. And the first part of passing interviews is 
leak code. So let's break down how to get absolutely cracked at leak code because this is where tons of aspiring software engineers completely stumble. Being good at leak code isn't just about knowing the solutions, it's about building that fundamental problem solving strength so you can perform when it actually matters. Here's the deal. The first thing you want to do is you want to start immediately. Leak code takes months to get good at. Don't wait until the interview is scheduled. This is not something you can cram the week before. I had to learn this the hard way. I got a meta software engineering internship interview a few years back, but I hadn't been grinding leak code. And when I showed up, I got hit with a leak code hard and was completely blindsided and failing the interview on the spot. You'll next want to focus on high ROI topics using the 80-20 principle. Why would you spend time on complex topics that never show up in entry-level interviews? Trust me, I've done dozens of coding interviews and I've rarely seen dynamic programming or complex math problems. These almost never show up, so why would you waste your time studying them? Instead, you must master the basics. That's arrays, strings, hash tables, DFS, and BFS, trees, linked lists, and heaps. If you master these, instead of worrying about these over here, you'll cover the majority of coding interviews you'll face. Step three is to actually use my Pareto problem set. This is my tailored problem set of about 50 high impact leak code problems designed exactly for internship and new grad roles. This set is structured to be completed in eight weeks, cutting out unnecessary fluff. It doesn't include leak code hard problems because you simply don't need them for your first offer. You can get it completely free at amamanazar.com slash leak code. And step four is practice effectively. When you pick a problem, spend five minutes understanding it, then five to 10 minutes brainstorming, and always start with brute force. The interviewer wants to see your thought process, not just the perfect answer. If you're stuck after 10 to 20 minutes, look up the solution, but focus on understanding why it works. This transforms memorization into real knowledge. Step five is to switch to Python. Python is 30 to 40% faster for coding interviews and much easier to explain your solution in real time. Trust me on this one. All right, now that you've crushed the lead code grind, the next step is to actually get amazing at real technical interviews. The thing is that just being good at lead code isn't enough. A coding interview is a performance and you need to practice that performance itself, not just train at the punching bags. Here's how you get amazing at technical interviews. The first part is practice explaining your solutions out loud. Don't just start coding immediately. Interviewers aren't just looking for the right answer. They're trying to understand how you think. It's like a boxer who only hits the punching bag but never spars. When you talk through your logic, you're showing them your reasoning and that's exactly what they want to see. Step two here is ask clarifying questions and identify edge cases. The interviewer intentionally gives you vague problems to see if you ask questions. This sets you apart as someone who isn't impulsive and takes time to deeply understand problems. Before writing any code, you'll want to spend a few minutes understanding the question, asking clarifications like, what if the input is null? Or what if it's empty? Part three is to show your reasoning even if you don't get the solution. I once failed a problem in an interview for a six-figure offer, but I still got the offer because I explained my thought process so well. An interview is testing your thinking, not just the perfect answer. All right, the final step in our seven-step process is to ace behavioral interviews. This is where a lot of you struggle even more than with coding interviews. And here's the brutal truth. If you can't nail behavioral interviews, all of that leak code and technical interview prep can go to waste. And some focus only on behaviorals and don't do any technical interviews whatsoever. So here's how you crush behavioral interviews. Part one is to organize your stories clearly. You'll want to break them down into the situation, the challenge you faced, the actions you took, and the results you delivered. This keeps your answers concise and easy to follow while showing both what happened and what you specifically did. Part two is you want to make your impact real. Don't just say you helped improve efficiency. Say something like, I created a backend dynamic field that saved our team 50 plus hours per quarter. Numbers stick. They make your story tangible and show real business value. Master this and you'll walk into any behavioral interview knowing your stories will land and your value will come through loud and clear. Look, landing a software engineering internship isn't a sprint. It's an ultra marathon. It demands grit, focus, and relentless drive. But here's the truth. By understanding this game and relentlessly attacking your specific bottleneck of these seven steps here, you're already operating at a level light years ahead of 99% of your peers. And if you want our help to implement every single one of these steps, rewrite your resume, rewrite your LinkedIn, get you dozens if not hundreds of referrals, build your application strategy, get you incredible at lead code, master technical interviews and behavioral interviews with our team of six FANG engineers and recruiters, plus we guarantee the outcome, Check out the accelerator inside the top link in the description. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.